Okay, let's mute. Okay. Hello, everybody that's very silent now. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. I am uh, going to pick up where I left off last time because my camera went out and we couldn't do the positions for the hands for, for Reiki. Also, uh, I wanted to show some galactic uh, Reiki as well and some di uh, one of the diagrams that somebody made for me that is uh, one of Tukur's, uh Reiki things, and I'll explain it to you when you see it. But um, as you know, in Reiki 1, there is no symbols, but, the, but I will show you one that is not in any of the Reiki courses. So... Jim, let oh, me interrupt you for a second. Um, uh, now take a breath and start with a blessing. The what? Take a breath and start with a blessing. I mean, you have to switch from 3D mentality to sacred art mentality. Okay, let's say a blessing. Is there a, do you want me to do it? Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Mother, Father, God, that we are able to come together and have a communion like this to learn about the healing energies of the earth and the universe. We know that they are very powerful now and that they, are, uh, they help others. But remember, they help you as well. As you are healing, you are getting a healing as well as the energy comes through you. We just ask that you use these energies in a beautiful and wonderful way and that you get stronger and more talented with them as you use them. Remember to to use them on your friends and family whenever you, chance you get your pets and your animals. Um, use them on whoever, anything that's alive. So in your name we pray, help this class to learn the beauty of all this and to be able to use it in a most beneficial way. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Amen. All righty then. I do have somebody here that, to help me, um, but I'm going to have to ask if you can see the hand positions because it's not the most ideal situation. You're not in the room with me, so... Um, I hope that you're able to see the different things. But first of all, I'm going to show you that what I do for my Reiki sessions, this is not in the book necessarily, but what I've learned for myself to be very effective. And that is the first thing is to open up all the uh, meridians for energy. Uh, let the energy flow all around the body before you even start to do a Reiki session. Because a lot of times you'll find out there's blockages throughout the body, especially if someone has a lot of illnesses or muscle problems or aches and pains. A lot of times there can be blockages in those areas. So this is just to open that um, full flow of energy around the body so that when you start your uh, Reiki healing process, everything is open and you have a little better access to everything instead of having to stop and uh, do a lot of blockage work. Now, that's not to say that there might be some blockage work anyway, but this will make it a lot less because it's in the major meridians of the body. So. Um, I will show you. I want to thank my friend Alan for coming today. He's having a nice nap right at the moment. So I'm going to start on his heart side. Now it's not going to appear that way because the uh, camera flips everything around. But I start on the heart side and the reason for that is that is one of the major places for blockages because a lot of people have emotional things with the heart, a lot of people have spiritual things with the heart, and a lot of people have physical things with the heart. So it's good to start there so you can uh, remove those blockages first. If there's any questions, let me know. And it be feel free to interrupt me if there is a question that is important or 
if it can't wait, if you're if you're gonna forget it, you better ask it right away. So do that do that anytime during this presentation because that's how you learn by asking questions. Alrighty, any questions so far? Yeah, good. Right. Thank you. Thank you. That's perfect. All right. Very good. This over here is the heart side. He is laying face up, by the way. Can everybody still hear me from this distance? Perfect. What a good sound. Okay. Yes. What I usually do, I'm putting my hand on his shoulder and his elbow. Can you see that? If you can't, let me know. Uh, what I'm doing is... You can is see it good. Okay. The energy flow in the meridians. There's a meridian in the arm. And I'm getting that. I'm feeling that the energy is moving through the this area here. Frozen. Hey, Jim, you're frozen. Also, I keep hearing somebody Skype. Kind of trying to come on, like that noise it makes. All right, Jim, you're frozen. It might be his Skype trying to come on or something. Mm. Yeah, he's frozen, and he doesn't know he's frozen. And I've sent the YouTube oh, no. link to Letty, and Letty can watch now. Cool. Watch. But all she can do. Should I take him off of presenting? All right, there. I've stopped presenting, Jim. But he's still frozen. Pop, oh, he fell out. He'll have to come back in again. You may call him, I guess I will call him on the phone. Okay, Max, if you want to, instead of all yeah. of us calling him. Here, I can be Sabrina. Just be my eyes right above the pictures. <laughs> Big on Sabrina. She's going, no, no, I never do that. You can always see all of me. Oh, everything's perfect. <laughs> you don't have any audio, Sabrina. We can't hear you for whatever reason. I don't know what's happened. No, it's it's a bad outer space movie. Do you need oxygen? <laughs> sorry, I can't hear you, Sabrina. <laughs> it really is a bad. Bad movie. Hey, Jim is back. Oh, I get it. Jim, you're back. back. Sort of back. And we're live still, so I can't pause it. <laughs> no. We have audio Hello? again, Jim. Yeah, we have audio, Hello? but no, we need your video Hello, back Jim. on. All right. I see that we have. What happened? Uh, uh, now you're back. You were out for about five minutes. You stopped at the. You, when, you, we saw how you started the Reiki, and then everything turned off. Well, it froze, and then you just silence. And now you're not showing either, but we can hear you. Hold on. Uh huh. There is much of. Yes, we can see. Hello. Yes. Yay. Jim, here. There you are. Jim, how about uh, turning the uh, patient uh, other way around so we can see the head instead of the feet? Would it be? be so you won't be able to, if I if I stand in front of his head when I do the positions, you won't see a thing. You're right. right you're right. How about you spin him back and forth as you do the thing? <laughs> yes. Well, that's not very good Reiki treatment if he flips back and forth. <laughs> I mean, we can imagine. <laughs> oh, Sabrina. Uh, anyway, yeah. 
this. You can hear me? Yes, bro. Yeah. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> All right. Ready? Yes. Okay. The next position is either from the elbow or the wrist to the knee. The right, the right hand will be on either the elbow or the wrist. I prefer the wrist because it's a longer distance. You can, it'll get the energy moving around like this. Do you understand that? Because it's going up his arm and down through his body to reach the knee. Yeah. Because this is the connection. This is my connection from here to here. And so I can feel that energy moving in this direction. Perfect, perfect. Jim, are you frozen again? Ah. Why does this keep happening with this? We've never had these many problems. Yeah, something is the interfering with the... Oh, it's back. It's back. There's a... What? Oh, there he is. Hey, you're back. You're back. What? Uh, we, you're frozen. Uh, last thing you said was about the moving of the energy between the wrist and the knee, and it was perfect. So you can continue. Okay. And now from the knee to the foot, and that he's on his feet a lot, so right here there is some blockage. And I can feel the energy is slow and not working very well. So I will stay there a little longer until the energy flows a little better. But if you do not feel the energy flowing, I would stay at each place for at least one minute. Jim, I have a question on that one. Yes. When you feel the energy as a blockage, is it hot when it's blocked and cool when it's clear? Well, some people feel it that way. Some people feel hot and cold. Some people, with me, I feel... That the, there's a tingling here, but not here, and that means the energy's not reaching here as as quickly. So that means I have to stay holding these two positions until the energy between these two areas is moving. Now, some people may sense that this is cold down here and hot up here, and the cold is that it's there's no connection. Or some people feel that there's a wave. There's all different ways to do this or feel it. But my feeling is that it's a tingly feeling. And whenever I feel the tingling feeling come from there to there, then I can move. Uh, same with me. Basically, it's either moving or not. Yes. And so and then the other position is I won't stand in front of them, but to hold both feet to get the feeling there's an energy field going right here that it goes up and down the meridians. Well, why won't you stand in front of him? So we can see? Oh, just, just to show, yeah. Oh, Jim, okay, okay. I, I thought there was a reason. No, just for the camera. It's frozen again. It's a Reiki for the video camera. Special positions. Yes, he, he's frozen. So you would, in fact, stand in front of them, yes. Yeah, uh, one thing I wanted to comment while he is frozen is that these positions are very, these finger positions are very specifically gyms, and they're there for a reason. It's more alien than uh, human Reiki. Basically, he sends the energy using the bone structures of the fingers. It's more of their silver. Um, strong wield strong wield energy and in classical reiki he would use the energy from the palms which is golden and more diffuse so he would the palms on the same places so the same positions just using the palms and not the end of the fingers but otherwise it is the same basically uh, basically yes uh, he would uh, the Reiki healer would go and just find the positions which feel most comfortable and has best sensation of touch. So best comfort for the hand and best comfort for the for the patient. Um, so on 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 the feet, it would be like the the palm would be either on one side of the foot 
or on the other side of the foot, like top surface or bottom surface of the foot. On the knee, it would be either inside the knee or outside the knee, kind of maximizing the, the, the contact of the surface and going from the soft middle of the palm to the warmest, softest part of the knee. So bone to bone, soft to soft, that's the principle. So Jim is mostly working on the bone structure, especially it's essential for older people. So he would touch his fingers to your bones, like uh, you can find the bones kind of reaching closer to the surface on the knees, on the hips, on the um, feet, so he would connect his fingers to the bones. On the shoulders. He said he was opening the meridian. Yes, so yes. Say so again? Opening the meridian and what? Opening the meridians, making sure that the energy was flowing through the body. Yes. Uh-huh. Oh, now two gyms. Okay, one gym. Hey, Jim. <laughs> uh, so, yes, uh, opening. I do the same. I don't pronounce in my mind. I don't have an intention to open the meridians, but I do open the Reiki channels, which is, <laughs> I guess, the same thing. So, I go through the body. First round, open the Reiki channels, and then I go the second round. And in between the two rounds, I would sense the energy, basically do the diagnostics. After I opened, I feel what needs to be done. And the second round, I go and do the treatment, do the healing. So first is opening, second is the healing and adjusting, uh, clearing the blockages. And the third one, basically, usually it's very brief, closing, closing the the protection basically. The intention is to restore the uh, shield, to restore the shield, like uh, Star Trek Enterprise. Take off the shield, do the repair, and then put the shield back on. Any more questions? Let's someone, uh, let's discuss the positions. Uh, does anybody want to discuss the positions? Sabrina? Discuss how? Like mention them? Yeah, just mention, discuss the ideas. What do you, what, so when you do the dance, it's a dance, right? When you do the dance, what do you think, how do you relate to that position? Okay. Um, I, I, turn, I, turn the camera a little down. Can you turn the camera down so your head goes up? Yeah, thank you. <laughs> uh-huh. Um, so, the wrist to knee. So, so would you also say that you are um, also opening the circuit? Yes. Um, and and creating you know the, the, the circuits where they're where they're broken, connecting them back up. Yes. Um, yes. Because that's what it's sounding to me as you go all the way around the body. Uh huh. So, yeah, I did actually little drawings for mine. Uh huh. So, um, but then it doesn't matter. Like let's say, like you were saying on the feet, that both palms of the hand are against the bottom of the feet. It doesn't matter if one is going in and one is going up. It might matter, hey. but not. A, hey, Jim, you're back. Okay. Yay! We, you you froze when you finished the feet. So the last position was the feet. The this feet. was the last thing you saw. Yep. Yes. All Both right. And you, you just go up the body like from the foot to the knee, the knee to the wrist. Uh huh. The elbow to the shoulder. Uh huh. And then shoulder to shoulder. I already did it for him, so he's already already open. Very so, good. Um. Now I'm going to start using, showing you the hand positions for regular Reiki. He said that he had shoulder problems, but first before uh, you do any just uh, singular work, you can do the hand positions from Reiki, which gives the whole body a Reiki treatment uh, from head to toe. But I don't use every single one of these every time. 
but you to uh, you use the hand positions for the head. The first position is behind the head. You move the head to the side and hold it, and then put your hand underneath. And you move the other head to the other side and put your hand underneath. So right now, your fingertips will be touching the very base of the skull or the top of the spine. And the left fingers go over the right fingers. And then you hold this position because this is um, for headaches and things of that nature, but also for clarity of mind, clarity of thought, opening thought processes. It can also, you also have your hand on the God chakra, which is pretty much directly behind the um, third eye. You don't have your hand right on it, but it will be a, affecting it a little bit. Do you ever, everybody understand that position? Yeah, so what is your intention when you... What? The occipital when lobe. It, yes, go ahead. Okay, did you say, like, put your hands, put the right hand under, then put the left hand over the right hand, basically at the occipital lobe? The yes, right, that comes up. right at the base of the skull, the top of the spine. Okay. What is your intention when you do that? What's uh, What should be the intention of the healer when you do that? It depends on, well, if you're intuitive, you're either helping with head problems, emotional problems. You can also be opening up for clarity because there's... Uh, there's some blockages in thought processes. You're just opening the head up. Uh huh. What are, can you add to that? No, it's good. I, I, the question was mostly clarifying, uh, saying that the students have to learn not only the position but also the intention for each position. Correct. Yes. Exactly. So you can help me out with that if I miss anything. Uh huh. The next position you can put. Oh, I'm backed up against this uh, dresser, so it's hard to do it. But it is putting the hands over the the eyes. You do not have to touch the face if you do not want to, or if if they do not want to be touched. But you put the hands over the eyes. And also the left fingers go over the right fingers. And this is to help with uh, clarity also. Also, the, it's to help with the eyes if there is any damage. A lot of times, even though there may not be any damage in the eyes, this will help with um, Im improved vision or improved... Uh, uh, some people have watery eyes. Some people have dry eyes. This will help with the eyes in every form that you can think of, including healing them if they're uh, not well. <laughs> also, you have to realize that your hands are over the sinus areas as well. The sinuses are in this area in the head as well. And so if, if your intention is, for the sinuses, this is a good hand position as well because it covers all those areas. Is it over That's the third any, eye? Um, it is. is. It over the I third don't have. Eye and are you doing this? I'm doing this. Okay, you're making a triangle. It's over the eyeballs. I'm sorry, touch you, but I'm just trying to talk to you. But okay. um. It is like this hand position. Okay. Left over right. It might show it slightly different, but I find this is the most effective for me is this because the energy flows best that way for me. Yeah, I, I do the you same. Huh? I do the same. It's very comfortable. Yes. You might find that a slightly different hand position in any of these areas might help you to feel the energy better, 
definitely move to your own position if that is the, the case. But stay in the, in the one given if this is effective for you. Okay. You want, okay? Thank you. Then the okay. next one is a long Go ahead. I wanted to bring uh, one thing to, to your attention is that usually you want to bring the patient into the state of meditation and Reiki, uh, Reiki meditation. So touching the nose wakes up the patient. Don't touch the nose and don't block the airflow from the nose and into the nose. Very good. Yes, I'm trying not to touch the nose and look at the screen at the same time. But usually you watch what you're doing. Um, the next hand position is over the ears. It can be down to the the top of the uh, shoulder, your hands from here to here. The fingers will end up at the top of the shoulders. You're just holding your hands like this over the ears and touching the top of the shoulders. And that's also for sinuses. The sinuses go to the ears. The sinuses are um, a big area in the head. Also, if you have somebody that uh, has difficulty hearing, it could be helpful for that. It also helps the brain uh, think more clearly. This is a, a, a thought process uh, opener as well because some people have a uh, hard time thinking clearly and so they sometimes need this position to help them think more clearly. Sometimes there's emotions going on in the body and the brain and the mind and this also helps with uh, your uh, helping to rid them of emotional unclarity, let's put it that way. Emotional garbage that's there and so um, it will do its job and uh, help them clear up a little bit. Yeah, Max, that would anything be anything else? That would be exactly my main intention. So I especially pay attention to people who watch television. I usually ask them before the recession if they do watch television and then obviously their eyes have seen a lot of uh, dark and dark things and their ears have heard a lot of dark nonsense. So uh, my intention is cl clear up all this darkness from their mind and bring in the ascension. Basically the whole intention is to help them to ascend, to improve, to reconnect to the spirit. So that's my intention. Clearing up and reconnecting to the spirit. I have a question. Yes. With this intention thing. I thought Reiki was smart and it knew where to go and what to do and it was not any of my business to meddle with what's happening. <laughs> Now, but, uh, listen to, to me carefully. Whenever you speak an intention, mm -hmm. other people that are trying to help will know better what to do. Yes, Reiki is an energy and it will go where it's needed, but you'll have people working directly on that area if you mention it. Now, you say, what people? Uh, you mean like guys? Uh, the universe? Colors? Yes, they're okay. They'll definitely hear what you say out loud, and without you saying anything, you can do a wonderful Reiki session. It's not that you won't, but to, to speak the intention is to get more people involved in the healing and more energy flowing. Out loud? No, not all of it. Not all of it, but some of it, some of it. If they say that they have necks and shoulders problems, and you okay, my intention is to help them, with the healing of the neck and shoulders, that also does something else. You, it helps them to concentrate on their own healing. Right. Because a lot of people just drift away and not are not thinking about what's going on to heal themselves. Mm -hmm. But if you bring them into the light that their energy is working with your energy, which is working with everybody else's energy, then they're more in tune to their own healing. And that is a beautiful thing because when the intentions are all in one place, you get a much stronger a signal, a much greater energy. Uh -huh. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. Okay. The what? Position. One more. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, one more thing is, uh, it's go always ahead. a balance and also always 
kind of shifting to actively doing the healing to from actively doing the healing to stepping away and let the energy to do it its own work so it's it's both at the same time or both oscillating between actively inviting the help and also be, becoming a channel and let the help do its work so it's a dialogue between us the healers and the god uh, the source energy which does the healing it's a dialogue yes the next position is this position it's the left over the right fingers again and it's down by the throat not not choking them or anything it's you're touching the top of the sternum with your the middle part of your hands and so it is sending energy into the throat chakras into the glands that are there and into the dental areas of the person so therefore this position has a lot of different uh, uses as well if someone has a sore throat this would be helpful if someone had swollen glands this would be helpful if someone is um, having dental problems this would also be helpful and also it's at the communication place there are some people that need help with communication and this is the uh, this psychic work is to help them communicate better to help them say what they need to say there are some people that have uh, messages that are blocked and they can't speak them to people that they need to say and sometimes it's I love you and sometimes it's um, um, I really need my space it can be anything but that it needs to be spoken and this can help with intention to uh, get them to say those things that are blocked in their in their psyche in their thought process and this, and this is the speech center right here, the blue chakra, the throat chakra. And so you're working on that as well spiritually. So it's a nice thing. Also, it can also help you to say things that you wouldn't normally say in, in a positive sense. So that is a good thing. Those are the main ones around the head. Do you... Do you use any others around the head? Those are the four I use on the head. Uh, show, show, show the thyroid show, gland. Show the thyroid. The what? Thyroid. Thyroid. The, the thyroid's in the neck, yes. Yeah. And that would help the thyroid as well. Thank you for pointing that out. Because this position, left over right, putting it here, would help thyroid, glands, all kinds of things that are in the neck area, even oh, blood what flow. I, what I, what I wanted to show the next position. You know it. Uh, uh, the thyroid gland is right under the apple, the man's apple, or how do you call it, Adam's apple. So you can put the hands right there, yeah. like a little more flat down on the thyroid. Yeah, yeah, like that. Yes. Yeah. That's this position here. That's the next position. Uh -huh. Left over right again. You put it right down, and it's on, in the heart area, and it's also the thyroid area. Mm -hmm. And um, this is helpful for the heart for emotion, spirit, physical. The heart has a lot of meanings to people. It it may it may not you may not see the spiritual and emotional part of the heart, but people refer to this area of the body. When they're talking about the broken hearts and things of that nature, so when this, when you put your hand over here and it is over the heart, and so your intention is to help the heart mentally, physically, and emotionally, also spiritually, because sometimes the heart can be in spiritual turmoil as well. Which hand is so which, which of your hands is left? Can you raise the left hand up? Okay, got it. You, oh, it's right. Oh, yeah. Okay, got it. Can you show us? Lift your hands, just kind of like off the person, and I just want to see if it does this. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Same with me. I, it's my favorite position as well. 
Okay, I've never used this position, so I'm excited. Also, too, I know. Okay, there. I heard you say yeah. before that that left hand over right hand, um, and the and that's yeah. really important. What's the importance of that? The left over right. The left the left hand over the right is because uh, Reiki is a female, actually a feminine energy thing, and the, the left side is the female side of the body, and so whenever you put left over right, it's more energetic to put the female in charge. Okay. Um, actually, I, I, I am left-handed and I do the, just the opposite. Same. I was actually, I was going to ask that because I had read something about, um, it's like, like having to do with sending and receiving energy and whatever dominant hand you are, that that's whatever you're sending or receiving. Right. It can, okay. There's a, okay. many different explanations works. Uh, but the the feminine side and Reiki are, is a feminine uh, energy. Left. The opposite. Of, what is it? Uh, Shorei? No, not. What is it? Qigong. Um, mm. And that would be the masculine version, which is non-touch. The feminine version is touch. The masculine version is non-touch. Is that correct, Max? Okay. Um. Uh, Karen I, I don't know. I don't know. I was just going to say, I think I heard Karen say, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's correct. Okay. okay. My hands are a little different. I, I feel really happy when my left hand is down and right on the top of the left. Very hand. Good. Oh. So I'll probably try both ways. <laughs> Give me back. Try me again. Hold on. Uh huh. Yeah, I think it's it's intuitive, and for me, it's un unquestionable. If I do the other way around, I just feel really out of place. <laughs> mm. So for me, it's obvious. Right. Yeah, that's right. The, well, I'm a lefty too, so I'll see. <laughs> doing Reiki on yourself, like on a daily basis for like three weeks, is like how you you can start feeling what your hands feel, because like when they were talking earlier about what do you feel, everybody feels different. Well, not everybody. But some people feel the same things, but people feel different things. Like sometimes right. people feel hardness. Sometimes people feel wind. Sometimes people feel tingling. Like a lot of times my fingers will tingle or start shaking or, yeah. both of, or I'll feel that it's connected because both of my palm chakras, like I can feel them swirling where before they were swirling at different rates. And right. then, then, you, then I know it's, so you've got to practice on yourself a lot. Yeah. Anything well, <laughs> it's quite common in Reiki 1 to, to have students every night before they go to sleep do a 15-minute Reiki session on themselves while they're laying in bed and to help them go to sleep. That's a pretty common. Uh, That's what I've been doing, yeah. that. <laughs> I've been sending Reiki to everything. Okay, yeah. excellent. Well, you know, you can heal yourself. There's been many cases in history where people have healed themselves of large, major diseases by using Reiki on themselves every day. Yes. Mm -hmm. The next position I want to show you is one like this, you hold your hands like this, put it on the, the meridians of the arms. This is to help any kind of uh, uh, elbow pain, shoulder pain, things of that nature. Now he said he had some shoulder pain, but I haven't really worked on that yet. This is a more of a generic position. It was, it's right on the arms here. Is it in the crook of the arm where the elbow bends in front or behind? Right between the shoulder, the uh, rotator cuff, uh, cup and the elbow, right in between there. Okay. Oh. Okay. Okay. And I can tell he uses his hands a lot because the energy is going to his hands. He cuts hair, so he uses scissors and all kinds of things. So um, I can feel the energy moving into his hands, moving down the arms. 
Is it lower than the bicep or at the bicep? I would say right. Is it right? Right at your bicep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right at the bicep. Okay. So. so. Thanks, Dan. A lot of energy. You see, if I was doing a regular Reggie treatment, I would probably stay in this position for yeah. maybe five, five or six or maybe even ten minutes, depending on how much energy he's taking in in that area. That's something to remember. If you can feel the energy moving or if you can feel the hot or cold spot, you leave the, your hands on that area that's taking the energy or the cold spot until it gets warmer or until the energy flows, slows down. He said this feels very good and that's because it he needs the energy in this area. So I'll come back to that in a little while. The next position is on the sides right here. Now his head is hanging off the table, so I'm right at the sides on each side of the navel, just like this. This helps the internal organs, the intestines, all the things that are in the belly area. It uh, helps with upset stomach. It helps with uh, liver and spleen and gallbladder and pancreas and blah 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 all those different organs and the uh, intestines some people like to put their hand on the top as well uh, just like this right over left left over right I mean and put their hand on right there and that helps with uh, digestion and and different things as well in the stomach area so if you're feeling if it if, if it feels like there's a lot of energy moving toward the center toward here or the center in the back, it, it could be one of two things. It could be that they need more energy up here in the stomach area, or they need energy in the lower back. Sometimes or the kidneys. Kidneys are back under here under your last ribs, back in the back. And the if if you're feeling energy moving around on the sides, then it could be somewhere else. But if you feel a lot of energy, stay there. Now, the next movement you can do on either side. It doesn't have to be the heart side, and it doesn't have to be the, the male side. But you put your hand right up at the waist level. Could you look up just Waist level with your hand like this, flat and your hand over top of it right here. This helps the lower back. Many people with sciatica or lower back pain uh, will ask for a lot of work on their back. This is one of the standard Reiki positions, hand positions for working on the lower back. What is happening is the left hand is on the back the right hand is sending energy through also. But the left hand being the dominant will be right on the, the right on the back. Now if you feel that your right hand is stronger for a position like this, you can flip them. In this kind of a position, it really doesn't matter if your left hand is on top or on the bottom. It just matters that the area is covered and the hands are sending energy one to the other. Yeah, it's one That's of my one favorite positions. It's one it's of my favorite positions. Position. And I usually do it while sitting. I move my stool so I can sit there. And when I sit, uh, the hand of the patient kind of gets on the way. So I gently move it out of the way on his belly. And then I sit and I can spend like five, ten minutes keeping one hand and uh, down below in the same place and moving the other hand back uh, like between different places like little up little on the spleen little on the liver and that helps yes so this is a very important one really Jim can you show the previous position the previous I just wanted to comment something You're beeping. Uh, this one? Yeah, so I do it from the side, yes, exactly. I don't do it from the head. 
I move closer to the patient so I, I can stand straight because otherwise the back becomes of the of the healer becomes becomes strained. So you don't well, want to strain your back too much. You yeah, want your comfortable the, position. The only reason I'm doing it this way is I don't want to stand in front of the camera or block anything. So I'll just do it this way for now. But find your own find your own comfort level. You uh -huh. most of the beds that they sell these days are adjustable. So make sure that when you put them together and adjust it, that you have it so that you're not hurting yourself when you're doing these positions. And for some positions it's impossible to do it symmetrically. So you do one side first and then another side. Right. The next position is on the each side of the hips. And this helps with uh, hip pain. It also helps with some back pain. It helps with any problems that are going on in between here because uh, this is just, it just sends the energy through. Also for females who have unhappy love, that's where they, their grief is sitting, right in between. Yes. So you kind of clear it up. You don't really want to state that to them or say anything about it. You can, if you feel that energy, then you can stay there, but you really don't want to start talking about their unhappy love uh, in the middle of a crowd or anything, so <laughs> it's not a good idea. So also, and you can come down and some people do this area, which is the thighs, you can do the knees, you can do the calves, uh, all the same on the sides there, and they help the legs in different positions. A lot of people need knee work. And I usually just do it like this. I put my hands on the right on top of the knees. If you feel the energy going into the knees, then you know that they they they're on their feet a lot, and they may not even necessarily hurt, but they do um, they do uh, have to. Uh, oh, I, I have to turn that off. Yes. Hey, but, Jim, how, yeah. how do you feel when they need the energy again? How do you, um, when you feel the tingling, is that that it, they need it? Yes. Or, okay. When, the, when you can touch somebody and you don't feel anything, that's either one of two things. That's they have a blockage and you need to stay there, or they need no help in that area at all. So if you stay there for like 30 seconds and you feel no nothing, then I would move because you're not doing much good. Uh, it, the energy is not going anywhere in from that position. Okay. So I when I feel the tingling and it's really strong, I know that they need that the help there. When the energy goes in really strong or you can feel the tingling, it's it's a place where they really need help. Now, see, on his knees, I can feel a little tingling, but it, he, they seem to be okay. Now, if you want to go behind the knees with the same hand position, just you just take your hands and cup the knees from behind and see if there's any uh, difference in up. Now, see, there's different energy back here. He needs more help on the back of its calves. And this is where I feel that uh, when I put my hands under here, I can feel the top of the calves and the energy is moving down the calves. So uh, when I had them on the top, I, I didn't feel anything. But under here, I feel that this, this leg especially is needing some help. Is that correct? It is for me, yeah. Yes. He said yes. For him, this calf is, and the energy that I felt was correct. He's needing more energy in this calf. And that's why I put my hands under the knees, because then it'll give you direction. If it was in his thighs, I would feel the energy moving up. But since it's in his calves, I felt the energy moving down. However, there is a little bit moving up toward the calves as well. I mean, the thighs as well. So, Jim, yes. for 
it's like someone my height or Sabrina, I think you're even smaller than I am. Like you're very tall. It's easy for you to reach both sides. But yeah. for us, like we may need to go from hip to knee to knee to ankle to In that case, yes. You can do one knee at a time like this by putting both hands on them. Like put both hands on the knee and then come over and put both hands on that knee from the other side. Right. Okay. So you can do that. That's that's perfectly acceptable. I mean, you have to adjust for your height, for your uh, for all the different things. Your style is different than ordinary Reiki. I'm showing you the basic moves from ordinary Reiki uh, that is taught the Asui way. But my style, personally, is nothing like this. Um, but it, it's very effective. Now, the last place I put my hands is down here. Now, you realize that the feet are a reflexology point. They have a lot of different... Um, down here has a lot of different connections to the body. How, how many know about reflexology? I do. A little bit. I do a little. Well, and so you would know maybe that the eyes are at the tips of the toes, the intestines are in the middle, and sometimes also on the top there's some inner belly stuff, and the, you know, uh, there are different areas on the foot that relate to the different areas of the body. However, if you just put Reiki into the feet, Sometimes people walk a lot or they're on their feet a lot for work, so uh, this helps put Reiki into the feet, give them energy. It also puts energy into the reflexology points. And that is a wonderful thing because that means the whole body is being worked on at once. And this is an area where, as I'm feeling now, a lot of energy goes in. Even if you, they don't have sore feet, even if they don't have anything like that, uh, there's something in the body that needs the energy, and this will send it through the re reflexology point right to that area. That and feels so, wonderful. Mm -hmm. That feels wonderful. He said that feels wonderful. So um, there's other areas in the body that need the energy, so they come to the reflexology points, and it's a beautiful thing. Now... There's other things you can do. You can actually rub the feet if you want, because why? Uh, this helps the, the client relax, the patient relax. It also works on all those reflexology points up and down the body. And there are some people, however, you will find that don't touch my feet. That is one thing they will say. Do not touch my feet or my ears. Some yeah, yeah. The ears. So some people are very ticklish. Jim, I need to go. Um, I bless you. You do a great job. Uh, one comment on the last thing: you possibly want to ground the person through the feet. Yes. Right. Absolutely. Uh huh. Uh, that, all right. Uh, everybody, goodbye, Jim. I got to go now, but uh, I bless you all, and I wish you the rest of uh, to have fun during the rest of the of the class. Thank you for being here, Max. Yeah, see you Monday. I'll see you Monday. We'll talk. Bye, Max. Bye, Max. Bye, Max. Talk before then. Okay. We'll talk early. Jim? Yes. Okay. I'm wondering when you are imagining Reiki flowing through your hands, I don't know if you imagine it or you just let it happen. But, like, for instance, like we were talking about. The whatever alien showed the like massaging with the fingers because you seem to use your fingers a lot more and that was like silver light and then gold light is coming out of the palms. Yes. Is that what you're like in your head is happening when you're doing this? We don't see the different colors of light. I feel the energies flowing though, and so I can feel the different uh, sensations of the energies. But I don't picture a real color until if I close my eyes and I see a color, uh -huh. then I think I associate that with one of the chakras that needs brightened in their body. Okay. So if you close your eyes and you see red or blue, then 
before you leave, you might want to just spin that chakra mm -hmm. that brightens up and energizes because mm -hmm. it's telling you that they're low energy in that area. Okay? Yeah. Now, I would, not every time do I see colors. And some people do not need their chakras spun every time you see them because that's sort of a personal thing almost. It's you're delving into their. This is all their past lives. This is all their uh, energies and stuff, and per really personal stuff. But um, if you see that something needs help, definitely help it. Okay. Now that is the positions for the hands for regular Reiki. I'm going to show you a couple things that are galactic Reiki. First of all, well, I think I'm going to leave this till one of one of the symbols till next time. But Chikur does something when he, she finds that someone is out of balance and needs grounding and um, needs energy in the whole body. She'll do this. This is the waist right here. She takes both hands like in a prayer position, but right like this. Are you seeing that? Yeah. And she goes like this. She brings them up and sweeps out three times. Up, out. Up, out. Three times. What that does is that's clearing whatever negativity was in this, these sides. This is the universal side, and this is the earth side. Okay? So right at the waist, she divides it. Although we know that it's at the heart that does all the, is the uh, center, but the center of the body is right here, and so that's where she divides. And then after that, she takes a deep breath. She cleanses herself and brings the energy back in once and holds it there twice. And three times, and that replenishes the the negative energy that she took out. So there's always, whenever you take negative energy out, there's always replaced by positive. Okay, remember what, that. What does the top versus the bottom mean when the, your hands separate? The top is the universal energy. The bottom is the earth energy. Okay. Just like your, your tree. When you're planting the ground, the, the roots go down to Mother Earth and the limbs fly up to the to the universe. So just remember that that way. So that's why the body is divided. It has it the energy to come together at the heart and create a new kind of energy for healing and different things of that nature. So that's something we'll have to get into some other time. So when I, she clears it, you said you do that three times, then she clears it. In what way does she clear it. Right when she's doing this, she's clearing it. Oh, okay. And then I thought you said she cleansed herself and then brought back in. Yes, and then she takes a deep breath and cleanses her hands, basically. Okay. Okay. Deep breath, very much in, very much out, as far as it'll go, and that cleanses her out. And then she brings the positive energy. And the reason for the cleansing is. Because if you have any of that energy that you just took out, right. hanging on, you, you'll put it back in. So right. you just want it to be cleansed out so that you can put in the positive. Right. So Also, when you're doing a Reiki treatment, now, um, at the end of your Reiki treatments, uh, is time an issue for anybody? No. Okay. At the end of your Reiki treatments, I'm going to show you some of my moves too, but I want to show you after to give you an Asui sort of understanding. You smooth out the aura. Now, why would you do that? Because you just worked on all kinds of things on the body. And all you have to do is run your hands over. You can feel the smoothing as you go. You feel the 
energy, just calm energy go all over the body. It's like icing the cake. And there you have it. You just soothe, smooth out that body, and the aura will uh, be in a much better shape. Now, what happens with auras is that sometimes you run into all kinds of negative people or people that are, are sharp tongued or whatever, and it can damage your aura, or even bumping into somebody that's done a lot of really negative things, and it can damage your aura, even, even in the back or the front or whatever. And so smoothing it out helps it to heal itself better, because there is little bumps and bruises and cracks in it, if you will, because you can feel that when you're doing this. So you smooth that out so that they have a more even and wonderful uh, sensation. When they get up, they'll be like, ah, oh, I feel much better about that. That if You feel more even and relaxed, so it's good. So um, the next thing is there's other galactic things, but there's symbols. Uh, and this is a time, I believe, that we're going to start losing the symbols a little bit because the uh, Reiki on the Earth is so strong now, it's getting stronger and stronger with the new energies. Some of these symbols will not be needed, but you know what? You're going to be taught them anyway because um, they can be helpful still. Because they, if you need a particular kind of energy, a very specific kind of energy, then you can use them to build that up. Like if you need uh, emotional energy for healing emotions or energy for just putting more energy in that one particular spot, or if you need something else, the, the, the symbols are important. But we don't learn them in Reiki 1. Is there any other questions right now? I'm going to work on his shoulder a little bit. My, I have to tell you also that there are other medias of healing that work together. You can, like some people say, oh, you can't add anything to Reiki. It's Reiki is Reiki, and that's all there is to it. Well, I've added acupressure to my Reiki, and it works very, very well. I can, I can find the pressure points and send the energy directly to the places that are needed for healing. And that is a very big plus for me because my people that I work with feel it much stronger when I use the acupressure. Now, I'm not going to be able to teach you acupressure, but if you get an acupressure book, you can learn that on your own, and it can be very helpful when working on certain kinds of pains, especially sciatica, back aches, and uh, head pains. I can work on the head with different pressure points on the head and arms and things of that nature. So I'm going to be working on his shoulders now. I can't believe it. We've gone like a half an hour and the, the video stayed on. <laughs> But I'm using a little acupressure. I have a feeling his pain is more in the back of the back neck across that way. Is that right? Um, yeah. Yes. One side. Yeah, the left side. Uh -huh. It's his left side. Other issues. And so I will stay here for a few minutes to just do that. But I'm using a, a stance like this with my fingers. This is a little Octorian. Octorians do all, all kinds of pressure points, but they don't do them for a long period of time. They race across the body, they do them in a certain sequence, and then that sequence is brought into a circuit with the final movements. And they're the circuit of the, the that they touch uh, come all together and work together in an energy field. So they they're quite advanced at, at doing that. Um, does he have pain that radiates down the sent down across his his back, like from the, you? What shoulder is it that hurts? It's his left shoulder. Left shoulder. 
And it, does it radiate down to the right hip? No, uh, just down. It goes down to the arm to, to the elbow. Okay. Because I, I, was, I was seeing a line of like light going from, but it's hard to see because you're laying down. <laughs> so I didn't know where it was. Well, going, I, don't I saw it radiating down. You're thousands of miles away, so it's really, but still it works pretty well. But I'm feeling a lot of energy coming down through here. So, um, there's, oh, there's, I just saw it radiating. Time. That's all. This is a good time for asking questions like, "How do I treat this or that or the other thing?" Is there any questions like that? I have a friend who I need. I'm scheduled to do Reiki on who's got sciatica problems. So right. that would be awesome. I would work directly on his back. I would have him. Lay on the table with his head in the, the little circle there because that's the most comfortable. You, without, without putting your head in that little circle, it can get really difficult after a while. But, and work on the opposite side. If, he is, if the pain is going down the left side through the buttocks, mm -hmm. the left leg, that yeah. means it's originating on the right side of the spine. Okay. So keep that in mind. So if it's going down the left leg, it's originally rating at just to the left of the spine. And same with the other leg, it's to the right of the spine. Because I found that when working on sciatica, it always starts just to the, the opposite side and moves that direction. Isn't that odd? But um, it seems like I can help it a lot better when I find the origination point. And then I work all the way down. I don't, not go on the butt. You're really not supposed to touch the butt. Unless so, they want, is it, is it, if it's okay with them? It's okay, if it's okay with them, it's a non-sexual move. But yeah. some people are feel violated if you touch their bum. So mm -hmm. if, if you get permission, go ahead and just work right down the leg where the pain goes. And that's very effective. Is there a reason for sciatica? Is there like a tanglement? When it's actually a nerve problem. Uh, sciatica starts with nerves that are uh, either trapped or pinched or damaged in some ways, and they send off a pain, a, a, a chain reaction of pain through the body. So. I mean, I've had it, but I just <laughs> I don't know. So, uh, would you use any acupressure? Acupressure, definitely. I use acupressure everywhere. I'm using acupressure right now. Can you feel that? A little. Yeah. Does it hurt? No. Yeah. You can feel the energy a little, but it doesn't hurt. So, it's good. But I know that it goes all the way down to the elbow because he said so. But I could also sense that because the energy was moving that direction. But, um... Any other questions? Because I've shown you the basic techniques now. It only took a hundred years. Oh. A <laughs> hundred and two. <laughs> hundred and two years. But I think that, did everybody get that? I want you now to do something for me. I want you, until Monday, for the next class, I want you to work on somebody and give them some kind of Reiki and, and see, feel, see how they feel, do the intentions, uh, remember as much as you can about it, and see how successful you are in doing a Reiki session with somebody. Uh, your, if you do with your dog or your cat, they will not be able to give you proper feedback. But um, they will, you will be able to tell how they feel in a couple hours. Because I'll give you an example. I have I have I have worked on several animals. One was named Cody, and he was he was very uh, decrepit at his age. He was having trouble walking up and down steps and doing things. But as soon as I finished my Reiki session with him, he went and started playing with the cat and dragging her around and doing all kinds of had a lot a lot more energy 
And then I reikied a, uh, a dog in, outside of town, and the guy said to me, oh, this is not going to work. He's, he's dead as a door now by 8 o'clock at night, and the only time he ever moves is in the morning when he's getting up in the morning. He'll dance around the bed because he has to go to the bathroom. So I reikied the, the dog, and I said to him before I left, this dog is has a lot more energy now. He's he may keep you up tonight. And he just laughed at me. And then he called me the next day and said, "Oh my god, at midnight my dog is dancing all around and and jumping all over me and wants to play." I said, "I told you." So, there's your response from animals. So, I want to share a real quick one. There I have a friend that had a dog that is like in attack mode all the time, just like angry, like a rage dog. And I actually noticed that I had never done Reiki on an animal, and I had noticed that my friend's life situation is coming out sideways at her dog. Instead of yelling at the person she wants to yell at, she's yelling at the dog. So I sat and gave Reiki to the dog, who like is like, rawr, rawr. he's a pit bull, huge, 90-pound pit bull. And I laid down with him and gave him Reiki. And I, he, I have known them for two-plus years. And the next day, a stranger came to the house. He was so chill. He did not bark once. He was so happy. It was the craziest thing ever. It was beautiful but ama and amazing. So if you know a friend with a pet that's really, like, jacked up, that would be a really good thing to practice on. Okay, excellent. Those are really good examples. And um, there's so many millions of examples of good Reiki. And... Um, it's a beautiful thing and it's a powerful thing. And also remember, if you're doing Reiki, remember to use positive language because now in this day and age, positive words have a lot more energy and so do negative words. So if you're using a positive words, a positive intent, a positive attitude and you feel good, you're going to have a great Reiki session no matter if you can feel the energy or not. The positivity is a very important thing to keep in mind because, you know, and also caring about the person that's on the table. It's like you, you, you actually care about them and want to help them. It's not like you're just doing Reiki, you know, uh-oh, time to do some Reiki. No, you're doing Reiki because you want to, because it's a beautiful thing, because it's healing. It heals you. You feel better about helping people. It's a wonderful thing. So um, I think that's all I can teach you for today. We've gone way over my time slot. <laughs> One hour, I, it's almost uh, 20 to 6. So, sure. so I, did everybody get enough out of that? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. You that was great. If you have any other questions, please let me know via email or or write it in Skype or something, and I will get back to you on that. But uh, for now, I think I'm just going to finish the Reiki on this gentleman, and I'll let you all go for today. So, all right. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Jim. Have a great day.